So that's everything you need to know about sensory processing disorder. Don't go anywhere. Guys, welcome back to the Aspery world. My name is Dan. I have autism, ADHD, OCD, and dyslexia, and I'm making weekly videos all about this stuff because it's important to me to help you. It's like my life mission or goal, if you like, to help autistic individuals reach maximum potential and really just be awesome. So if you want to be part of the movement, come along with me. Remember to hit the subscribe button down below, but click that notification bell and follow me on all social media because I upload four videos every single day. Oh yes, I don't sleep. I'm joking, I do sometimes. Guys, what's going on? Welcome back. If you're new around here, I have a free Autism Life Hacks PDF book you can download now from autismhacks.net, completely free. The link is down below. So, uh, sensory processing disorder, what is it? So, sensory processing disorder, sometimes called SPD, is a form of different types of um, sensory hypo or hyposensitivities to sensory environments. And this is third party stimuli. So, this could be that you are towards different lights. You could be in a, an amusement arcade and the lights are too bright or flickering and it's really causing you um, harm. Or there is a, an event going on and the noise is too loud. You even could be walking through a mall and the noise is too loud and, and you're making you cover your ears. Now, sensory processing disorder comes comorbidly with autism. And autism is a neuro neurological developmental condition, which actually has a bunch of different things co-occurring. could be like ADHD, it could be OCD, all kinds of stuff. Now, I have sensory processing disorder myself, and it is very interesting that mine is like texture and smell based um, and sound based, but sometimes you can be also hyposensitive. So a person could be um, uh, less sensitive or more sensitive to something. It's really quite interesting. And sometimes you can have a combination of both. So someone could be like hypersensitive to sound, but hyposensitive to taste. So they could like have to block out loads of sound, even if it's like the 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 lowest sound ever, like, you know, a mouse taking a fart in the next room, and you could be, like, really sensitive to that sound. However, you could sit and eat, like, spicy food until the cows come home, because it, it just affects people on the autism spectrum differently. Now, up to date, I've not really come across many people who have just a sensory processing disorder diagnosis. It's usually co-occurring with, like, autism or ADHD. Now, sensory processing disorder can be very debilitating, and I know for me, when I was doing my degree in chemistry, you had to do a bunch of other stuff first, and we were analyzing um, onion skin under a microscope, and I remember uh, being in the room with uh, cut onions, and I couldn't be there because I'm really sensitive to the smell of onions, I'm really sensitive to the smell of um, garlic as well, so I can't be in the room with those things, which makes it very difficult for me to cook, uh, because how can I cook when they're the basis of pretty much every meal, right? So it's really difficult and it can be very challenging. But that being said, there are so many things to help overcome. I mean, even the Life Hacks book that I've linked down below for free, I have um, some sensory processing hacks in there that will help people who are hypersensitive to certain things, like, you know, tags on the back of the, the back of the shirt or even seams of the socks. All those things are sensory processing issues. I'd love to know your opinions and your input on it. Pop it in a comment down below. Give this video a share if you think it can help somebody. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.